Why do we act so infantile because somebody refuses to agree with what we present as our opinion or what we believe to be true? Why do we act this way? I don't understand it. I was recently talking to a soul brother and he made it very clear and maybe he was giving me some kind of a hint but he was telling me about how sad some Negroes are who refuse to accept their African uh, ancestry they refuse to accept that they are Africans he does not like so-called black people, the Negro, the African Americanists, or whatever you want to call yourself, he does not like when we who are the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, he does not like any of us who reject this uh, story he believes is a fact that all of us who claim to be descendants of slaves, all of us are Africans. He does not want anything to do with those who reject their African side. Well, I guess, brother, that meant yours truly. I have been speaking and or talking on this media since 2007. In December, it would be 10 beautiful, glorious years. <laughs> and I have never embraced Africa. Never. I've never accepted something about that whole, we are Africans and the black power, black supremacy. Something is wrong somewhere in that type of thinking process almost 10 years ago I didn't know exactly what it was but now I have grown to understand where the problem lies and we're going to talk about that right now in fact I have no problem with confessing or admitting that I have been in, in error for the last uh, nine years on this particular subject. I have no problem with that. We are going to teach each other right now. You are going to teach me and let me teach you. In fact, I don't like that word teach. We're not teaching. I'm let us present uh, our evidence, our logic to one another and let us try to resolve and compromise our position, our understanding, so that something concrete can be uh, presented that we all can bond around, so that we actually can become a real people instead of being called a people when, when the reality is we are not. Talking about a black community when in reality there is no black community let us sit down at the table and come up with something whereas 
all of us can agree this is who we are as a people you can still be comedic you can still be African you can still be uh, Christian you can still be a Republican you can be whatever all these things but as a people we must come up under one umbrella and once you come up 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 under one umbrella many other things will begin to fall into place so let us see exactly how valid how credible is this we are all African thing let's see actually the foundation how does that really does it really stand is it really strong let us begin with this I don't know if you can see this okay here we go this is a map of Africa that uh, some children are coloring this is the continent of Africa now you say that you are African problem number one there is no people on this planet that call themselves African Africa is not a life form it is not alive it is a continent it is a landmass this is a landmass this is not a picture of something that is alive this is not something of something that reproduces that smiles that is sad that reproduces or anything of that nature if this is a continent this is a land mass a continent does not have DNA a continent does not have DNA so when somebody tells you I have African DNA they are telling you a lie because Africa is a continent a continent does not have DNA a tribe the name of a tribe does not have DNA the same people the same species of people that's in this tribe could also be in another tribe the same species in different tribes the tribe does not have DNA a tribe can be here today and gone tomorrow simply by an act of war and they lose that war then they become part of the tribe that won so what happened since that tribe no longer exists then how can that DNA be inside of you be a part of you a tribe a city a there's no such thing as American DNA European DNA New York City DNA California DNA you have been tricked what is it that Malcolm used to always say you have been bamboozled you have been manipulated you have been misled by the by those who wish to profit of your desire to find out exactly who you are and like always we get caught up in a bunch of lies <clears throat> again this is Africa now Africa consists of over 50 countries which one let's be specific you are an African so we know that there's no such thing as an African people only a continent called Africa so we do know that there are 50 countries which one are you claiming be specific I'm waiting now what tribe do you come from what religion did they practice what language did they speak I'm waiting let us hear you say that you are African you should know where you come from 
you are depending on some fake DNA results that your enemy created because he knows your desire and you are oh wow you've been tricked out of your money and you are still back at square one because with all your DNA results you are not still not able to answer these questions a brother told me when he got his DNA results that he his DNA carries all these different tribes like I explained to you tribes nations don't have DNA what species what people that you come from and again oh we're gonna talk about this everybody that's dark skin everybody that you call black does not mean that that that's a part of you we're gonna talk about that as we continue this discussion you want to claim African history you want to claim that you're a Hebrew Israelite you want to claim comedic teachings y'all want to claim all this different all these different things and that's fine and dandy your problem what is your direct connection to Egypt you're born in America we know that for a fact we want to see your direct connection to Egypt we want to see your direct connection to the Hebrew Israelites we want to see your direct connection to the people that you are claiming you are part of none of you will be able to show a direct connection to none of these people at all we need to see your contribution to that history you are claiming comedic history you are claiming that Egypt is your history Ethiopia is your history all any dark skinned people on this planet you are claiming their history you are plagiarizing you are stealing claiming it that's, if that is yours and it's not because if that history is yours then you should be able to show your direct connection and your contribution to that history where is it where is you where are the you cannot answer now another thing that's ironic and what some may find funny is not really funny but it, it, it's ironic that you claim Egyptians you claim ancient Ethiopians you claim these uh, Hebrew Israelites whoever they was whatever and as I've already spoken about you can't show a direct connection or contribution to none of these people but you know you are from them you know that you're African you don't show no direct connection or contribution to African history either you just say that's what you are you can't really show the, these things but what is so sad is that you are making these claims to ancient people and to a continent that you've never been upon have no connection to but you don't even know the people the biological people living right here in the United States some of your relatives live in the same city or town you live in and you don't even know who that you don't even know them but yet it's still you could talk about ancient Egypt and, and Ethiopia and Hebrew Israelites and all these other black histories that y'all claim that that you that you can't show that you had anything to do with but your auntie live right right across town you don't even know who she is your great grand uncle just passed and you didn't even know who he was but you know all this African Egyptian all this other black history stuff but you don't even know your own people biological true biological people that you can actually show a direct connection to and your little contribution to your family history you don't even know the people who are living right around in your city who are who you who are your actual relatives the purpose of dr. Ben the purpose of dr. John Clark 
and our other historians, they get honor, they get props, they get respect, because they did expose by research that indeed these with dark skin have contributed uh, contributed to humanity centuries eons before the appearance of the wicked racist caucasian pink people they did that and they done brilliant jobs so props to dr ben and dr clark and uh chancellor williams and all our historians wonderful job let us applaud them. Yes. Thank you. But again, dark-skinned people did these things. You and I, we who are the descendants of slaves born in America, are product of races. We had nothing to do with those histories. And to my knowledge, these historians never shown no connection except these persons had dark skin but they show no American connection to ancient Egypt, ancient Ethiopia, some type of Hebrew Israelites, whatever, all these things that y'all foaming at the mouth about. They show no connection because that is not you. You're not part of that. There are all kinds of animals on this planet. You can have a bear. There's the polar bear, black bear, grizzly bear. But they are all bears. Elephants, uh, the Asian elephant, the black elephant, other types of elephants, all different types of lions, all types of different ants. They are all ants, but they are all different. So when you're looking at, oh, hmm. so when you're looking at so-called black people, dark, dark-skinned people, there are different. You're different. You are not the same. You are trying to do something that is not real. We are all different. Yes, we are all dark-skinned people. But we are different. Just like the black bear is different from the grizzly bear, the grizzly bear is different from the polar bear. This dark skinned person is different from this one. This tribe is different from that tribe. This country in Africa is different from that the other country in Africa. What they do on the west coast of Africa, they don't do on the east coast of Africa because everybody is different. Y'all refuse to understand that we are different, even among Europeans. To my knowledge, there are at least, and you probably don't even know what the top 10 are. There are at least 70 various types of European, Caucasian, pink type people. They are different. Different countries, different people, different ways of life, different languages. They are different. And many of them had nothing to do with slavery. But since slavery was part of the economic, uh, the economic uh, scheme of things, You hollering all this black power and you talking about this. Every, every dime you spend, the taxes that you pay, you are part of the system and you're caught up in it. So they are exploiting little children in Asia, in Africa, and you are buying the diamonds and the shoes or whatever products of this, of this cheap labor. You become part of it. Not a direct part of it, but you become part of it. So you have Europeans who had nothing to do with the slave trade, but they are part of the economic system. 
and the, the, the slave traders was part of it. Technically, you cannot blame every, so technically you can't blame all the Caucasian people for slavery, although many of you do. That is not fair. I'm not here to be like those I complain about. I want to be fair and I want to be just. So, so technically, actually, you cannot say all the pink people is devils and they had something to do with slavery because that's not true. So if you have 70 different kinds of Caucasian people, please show us their connection and their contribution to slavery. And you won't be able to do it. The only thing you, the best you probably could do is talking about England, uh, 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 the Germans, and of course America and whatever. You're not going to be able to really talk about Caucasian people as a whole. The 70 different various type of Caucasian Europeans, you're not going to be able to explain to us how they were involved, directly involved with the murder, the rape, the enslavement, of, and the other horrors of the Black Holocaust. Let's be fair. Let's stop. Let's get out of this mentality. I understand that we have been denied freedom, justice, and equality. That does not mean that we wish to become like those we complain about. We don't want to be like those of whom caused us uh, harm. And if you look at Africa, let's go back to our children drawing of Africa that they need to color. Do you know why there are countries, 50, 50 countries in Africa? The reason why there are 50 countries in Africa is because they are separate. They are not united. They are separated. And, it, and also, there are over 700, I believe, different tribes. Well, let's say 100. Uh, the numbers, I'm, I'm not really sure on the numbers, but there are many different types of tribes, many different types of languages. Why? Because the people were separated. The Zulus was different from another tribe than the Bantu or anything. Everybody was you're trying to put everybody in one category, and that's not how nature does. You cannot put all ants in one category. As ants you can, but then you have to break it down to the various species. There are different types of dark-skinned people. You want to try to say that we are our family, we are all the same. We are not. We're just not. That's not re reality. The Africans clearly were separated. And they are separated till this day. They are still. This tribe is doing that tribe. This country is doing whatever it does. Everybody is not the same. However. Upon. Uh, the practition of what we call slavery, black chattel slavery, what the race has done is that they took these people, these persons who were divided, who were separated, whether the dark-skinned people was already in this country, in North America, or at some point in time, of which we do know, they did uh, import dark skinned people from that continent called Africa. What the race has done, they mixed these people involuntarily. They were not, they would have had nothing to do with one another. Listen now, this is the, this is the key here. These dark skinned people would have had nothing to do with one another, but because of slavery, they were forced to interact with one another. And this Caucasian, these races, these slave uh, 
handlers. What's the anyway? They practice slavery. They force you to intermingle and reproduce with those of whom you would never have had nothing to do with. This is how the American Negro was created. This is how the American Negro was produced. So when you make an attempt to claim ancient Egypt or be a Hebrew Israelite or whatever you want to call yourself, it's all, it's all, God, I hate to, it's all a lie, I'm sorry. It's false because this is what you are. You are a mixture of all these dark-skinned people, and we don't even know who they actually were. We don't know who they were. He mixed them up, made them interbreed with one another, and then he raped our grandmother, raped our sister, raped our wives, raped us as men, raped us as men. So, in the American Negro, not only do we possess the DNA of various unknown dark-skinned people that could have been on this, on this soil already, as well coming from the African continent. In fact, you could, they could, could have come from almost anywhere. The racist slave uh, Handlers didn't give a damn where the uh, the black body came from. They did not care. And so he mixed all these people, dark-skinned people, who would never have had nothing to do with one another, mixed us up, mixed them up rather. And he produced the Negro. He produced something that he called black, something that he called Negro. And that's you and I. And our very existence, our very beginning, does not come from ancient Egypt or Ethiopia or no other place. Our origins begin with slavery. That's what made us, whether you like it or not. Prove me wrong. Prove me. Prove otherwise. In the teachings of the nation of Islam, they talk about the original man. The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of uh, the God of the universe, cream of the planet, so forth. You say that and they teach it like that's you. You are not the original man. It would even be safe to say that many of the people, even the original people, the original livestock, because that's what we were, our ancestors, our ancestors was livestock. The original livestock was not original. But but hybrids, mulattoes that came from somewhere and spread across the planet. They were more of an of from the original people than we are. We are a because the original man did not have the white man, the pink man's blood in him. There's no doubt, and you know that we have the Caucasian man. So how can you be the original man when the original man did not have the Caucasian pink man's blood in? And the original, whew, and the original man never was a slave. So you was born. Slavery produced us. And that's why for some of us, the thought, even the very thought of not serving and submitting to, to a man or an alien or some God, we go out all out of our all out of our minds because we can't even comprehend not serving somebody because you're a slave. You was produced to be a slave. And right now, in 2017, you are still a good slave. You have a slave mentality. Always looking for somebody to worship. Always looking for somebody to submit to. Never seeing no value in yourself. 
You are not the original man. The original man means you are a purebred. I want to use a dog for an example. Not calling us dogs, even though some of y'all call our women bitches. I'm not, I'm just using dogs as an example. Many of you have a dog in your house. A purebred dog, German Shepherd. The only thing a German Shepherd can produce when a German Shepherd is a purebred. Now, mind you, that dogs come from wolves. So, actually, technically, the German Shepherd is a hybrid, it's a mutation. But after a certain period of time, hybrids and mutations, they come into their own, they become their own species. They become their own, yeah, their own species, their own being. So out of dogs, you have a purebred called a German Shepherd. The German Shepherd has certain behaviors, attitudes, and whatever that distinguish German Shepherds from other dogs. German Shepherds only produce German Shepherds. Two German Shepherds can only produce a German Shepherd. You wouldn't get no other dog from a German Shepherd. However, it is rare because the German Shepherd do come from a wolf. There is dormant DNA inside that German Shepherd and you might get another dog, strange looking dog, now and then from German Shepherds. But basically, that's all you're going to get dealing with a purebred. However, when you're dealing with a mulatto, when you're dealing with a, a mutation, when you're dealing with a hybrid, when you're dealing with a mutt, a mutt can produce puppies that look like a German Shepherd. A mutt can produce puppies that look like a Chihuahua or a Dachshund or any other kind of dog because a mulatto is a hybrid, is a mix of different different other dogs. So you have the American so-called Negro. The original black man can only produce black people. Not light-skinned blacks, not yellow, not red. The original man can only produce black people. Again, very rare. You might have a light-skinned person show up or somebody that look different. Very, it's very rare because there's a dormant gene, the recessive gene that sits in the, in the original people. But you have the American Negro. We can be black as my computer or we can be light as a beige piece of paper or whatever. We produce the colors of the rainbow. We produce the colors of the rainbow because we are mutts. We are hybrids. We are mulattoes. We are. We can even produce children that look Caucasian because we're not pure. We're not original. We are a mixture of various different dark-skinned people, including the Caucasian races. That's why we produce, that's why we look, we can look so different. We can look like an African. Some of us can look sort of Chinese. Some of us can look Caucasian. We can look like almost anybody. The American Negro. Let us make man. God can do it. And so did the white man. He produced you and me. The descendants of slaves. We, our origins begin, it started, we were produced, and we are a product of slavery. You are not the original. But just like I was talking about, we've become our own species. We are black people. We are the Negro. We are the African Americanists. We are not the original. Just like the German Shepherd. The German Shepherd is not the original. The original is the wolf. We are far from the original. We are a mixture of hybrids and perhaps some of the original. 
but now we come into our own. And this is where you find yourself, and this is where you must start. You must accept the reality of who and what you are. And there's no shame in it. So what? You, your life started with slavery. Your father is a drunk. Your mama was a prostitute. So what? what? What does that have to do with you? But the reality is, your father is a drunk. Your mother is a prostitute. You don't have to be a drunk. You don't have to be a prostitute like your mother. Just because our origin, just because we were produced and a product of slavery, don't, don't mean that we have to stay in that type of condition. We can evolve. We can grow. You keep pointing at ancient Egypt. You keep pointing at all these different fantastic people. And that's wonderful. They don't exist. They are dead. You are alive. Whatever they do is over with. You are alive. And you can grow and become better and greater than they are if you allow yourself to do that. Once you die, your history stops. Their history stops. It's over with. Your history continues to move forward if you allow yourself. Be proud of who you are. Praise yourself. Do you think that it was easy being a slave, living with these races? But yet and still, look at all the accomplishments that the descendant of slave, the Negro, the, the colored man, look at what we've done. We are survivors. We are the world's greatest survivors. Now, you need to learn how to live, not just survive. You have to learn not only to cry in and the pain and the suffering, but now we need to learn how to be happy, how to enjoy your life. Because it's time for you to live. We've done enough dying. We've done enough suffering. Unfortunately, it's going to take a lot to get this troublemaker off our back once and for all. But once you do that, you think Egypt is so great. And it is. And all this other history that you brag about. And, and, and actually you steal, really. Because it's not your history. But you don't have to do that. You have the potential to do what they've done and go beyond them because they no longer exist. You can do things that you that they could never comprehend as great as they once was. Wow. And that's, that's what I'm trying to get into our heads. That's why I'm trying to get us Learn how to live. Get your soul back. Soul brothers and sisters. What a wonderful name. <sighs> Give me a second. Um get a little comfortable here <clears throat> can we talk so brothers and sisters can we talk I hope so you've come to the right place this is the realities temple on earth internet ministry I am your soul brother number one Angel snub number seven. And I, and, and I want to talk with us for a few seconds, <clears throat> a few minutes. And uh, I want to send this message to the warriors. There are many uh, black men, soul brothers, who claim it is natural that soul brothers are warriors. They claim to be warriors. However, when you look at our history and you look at us right now, 
I don't personally I don't I don't see it. There are a few. I we, we must confess there are a few, but overall, if it's natural, I see no sign that it's natural at all. But we want to talk about that in the next few minutes. Let's let's talk about this. I want us to talk to the warriors, to the men, even the boys. I want to talk to us as a soul brother and sister collective. We're not we're not a family yet. We're not a community. However, we have similarities and we should unite on those things that we have in common. We should. But I did say in a video prior to this one, we were born of slavery. And slaves do not unite. That's something slaves don't do. So when the slave master saw a slave that wanted to unite or run away, those type of slaves, that type of thinking had to be immediately dealt with. And the slave master did a very good job because right now today, that slave mind is alive and doing well. So the subject that I've chosen today has very little effect to a slave. But I'm going to talk anyway because you never know who might be listening that might take my talk to the next level. And I will be there with you. You can believe that. We are taught, we are told, I heard somewhere, Young men for war, old men for counsel. So the young men are depending upon the old men for correct guidance. Clearly in 2017, the old men are not counseling the young men because clearly the old men don't believe we are at war. If the young men are for war and we are talking about war, the reality of war is death. The reality of war is destruction. It is not pretty. There has been on record no pretty war. All wars produce death and destruction, rape and murder, environmental destruction. That is war. So the young men who might claim to be at war right now, you don't see them actually participating in an activity that make them look like they are at war because that is not how their old men are counseling them. They are counseling them to do something other than a war because a war consists of death and destruction because you are serious about getting rid of an enemy that is causing you harm or threatening your wife and your children. These old men that y'all look upon for counsel are asking you to build black wealth, to build some type of future in the house of your enemy. What kind of counsel is that? Please tell me. Well, what are you talking about? They supposed to be picking up guns and, and, and grenades and that's part of war. That does not necessarily mean that is your total strategy. 
Young men for war, old men for counsel. Why old men for counsel? Old men for counsel because as you age, you're supposed to pick up certain type of experience. As you age, you're supposed to become more wiser. As you age, your thinking process is more complex. You control your emotions better. So these are things that the young men, they have not matured to that level. But the young men, unlike the older person, has the energy to carry out the strategy, the plans of their elders, their those who offer them counsel. And if the union is good, if the union is balanced, if the if the elders have respect for their young people and the young people have respect for their elders, being their elders, depending upon them for competent, competent leadership and guidance, then the enemy has a serious problem. I was a younger man one at one time. I was 18 years old at one time, 19, filled with energy, ready to go to physical war if necessary. No problem with that. And if the young men that I counsel, I have no problem with jumping on the physical battlefield because I'm not going to ask you to do nothing I'm not ready to do. However, old men for counsel, young men for war. You need your elders, you need your counsel alive as long as possible to develop the correct strategy that you need because you have the energy, young man, to carry that out. You are in a situation where you're dealing with a powerful force. You dealing with an enemy, the greatest army on the planet. You're dealing with an enemy that controls the greatest media on the planet. You're dealing with an enemy that's just all powerful. How could we even begin to even think to try to deal with this devil? This, this, it's almost impossible. So that is why your elders, your counsel is guiding you to be docile. That's why your your elders, your counsel, they are cowards. They don't have they don't have experience with all their life experience. They come up with nothing. They're going to tell you to be docile and build businesses. What happened to Black Wall Street? The brothers and sisters who lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they knew that was going to happen to them sooner or later. They knew it. Common sense tell you that was going to happen because you are trying to do something in the house of your enemies. Your elders must be understand the reality and the situation that you are in and then move competently in appropriate manner so when the young men who are willing to die and sacrifice and use their energy there's a great chance that they will be successful I want to tell you about how this elder would move you I understand that we have to eat I understand that we have to have housing. I understand that we have to have clothes. I understand all those different things. But there's a way to move. And you have to be unorthodox. And you have to take your enemy by surprise. You got to know how to duck and weave. You got to know how to attack and when to move back at the right moment in time. 
I'm not a boxer. But I box people who was uh, amateurs going, getting ready to go pro. I'm not a boxer. But I have actually beaten people who were semi-amateur, whatever, semi-pro type folks who were actually boxers. Because I boxed them unorthodox. And they were surprised. How could this guy, I'm thinking, I'm looking at my opponent. He's a better boxer than me. Got, he has better skills than I do. How can I defeat this person at his own game? Woo, see. How can you beat the white man at his own game? It's surely not sitting around here trying to build some kind of power. That's not how you're going to beat him at his own game. Not that way. It's been tried, and they dropped bombs on it. And you see what the end result of that. Nothing's going to change, even in 2017. I'm not a real basketball player. I learned how to shoot a basketball with a tennis ball in a coffee can. And my shot is unorthodox. Everything about me is unorthodox. Anybody in sports will tell you when you face an unorthodox op opponent, it's very difficult because they do things that are that you don't expect. They do things that's abnormal. And you need to be abnormal when you are fighting in a war. You have to understand the weakness of your enemy. You have to understand that you cannot do this alone. You need to seek friends, allies outside of so-called black people. Because a lot of these black people are on the side of your enemy. Some of your elders are telling you, you need to stock up on gold and silver because times is going to get hard. You can't eat gold. You can't survive on silver. You need to learn about edible plants. You live in North America. You need to learn about what plants that you can eat. What animals you can trap. Learn how to trap animals. Things of this nature. How to survive in North America. How to eat. How to live, how to trap, how to build and make tools outside of what we normally do. You have to be unorthodox. So your elder must have a certain amount of experience. Your elder must have a above average ability to create a strategy. And it's here. But you don't believe that you are at war. You don't act like you are, are at war. You're not looking at this from a vantage point that you are at, at war. Because the elders, the council, the old men that you're seeking for counsel are not guiding you correctly. And as long as you're not guided correctly, the only thing you're going to become is not a warrior, but nothing but a comfortable slave. You can get angry at me all that you want. But that's the reality of it. You are nothing but a comfortable slave. Pretending. To be a soldier. Looking like a soldier. But you're not a soldier. Pretending it's an illusion. You're not real. But see. That satisfies. The comfortable slave. Because it makes them feel like I'm doing something. But if you're not spilling blood in the street. Like wars do. If you haven't destroyed something. And your enemy still smiling, sniggling and, and grinning. When your enemy stops smiling and, and skinning and grinning. Then you know you got, you got something going on. He run around happy, still talking about his money, his fame, and what he going to do, and all that. He's not suffering. He's not crying at funerals. 
You crying at funerals. You wondering if you're going to have a job. And your enemy lives day in and day out. Ain't worried about nothing. And he damn sure ain't worried about you because you are a pretend soldier. A pretend warrior. A paper soldier. Talk a lot of stuff. Ain't gonna bust a grape. Because your counsel, your elders, they don't have what it takes. And you following them. They have made you scared just like they are scared. Made you a comfortable slave because that's what they are. As long as they can, as long as you can listen to, the, to their speeches and their rhetoric. That is not doing what is what is it gaining? What is it has it done for you? Absolutely nothing. It gained it has gained you no kind of respect. And we are looked upon like a joke in the world. You should want to wipe the smile off all these bums' faces. You need to let them know I ain't nothing to play with. But as long as you follow these old men for counsel who don't know what the hell they're doing, young men at war, you have lost before you even began. There are many of us, brothers, you call us old men, but we know exactly what needs to be done. And don't be afraid, because if we do it right, I don't care how powerful your enemy, you think your enemy is, you will beat them. Mm. Like I told you, I'm not going to ask you to do nothing I'm not willing to do. And one thing I'm not going to ask you to do is be a little sissy, a comfortable slave, running around here pretending like you some kind of soldier and you ain't going to do nothing. When you see me coming, you better believe we ready to take care of business for real. All that jokes around, jo all jokes aside, and your enemy will take you serious. Like I said, it's not always about the gun and the bomb. It's about using your mind more effective, using the resources and the things that you have more effectively, a more effective strategy instead of a this show. You should, you, you should not want to be an entertainer. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. Until next time, y'all.